The next one will be the feature of the Huawei WLAN product. The objective. Describe the basic feature of Huawei WLAN product. Least key feature of Huawei WLAN product. So I will begin from the first one, the basic feature of Huawei WLAN product. So the AP, we can able to classify into two different types, the FAT and also the FIT. The Huawei AP can work as a FAT AP or the FIT AP and switch uh, flexibly between the two working modes based on the network plan. When the wire network scale in uh, is small, the customer need to purchase only the AP product and set the AP to work as a FAT AP. So currently their network is not so uh, so big, so they just require a um, few AP to have the um, the coverage okay, for the wireless access. So and they don't want to spend the uh, extra money to purchase the the controller. So, um, the Huawei give us this um, flexibility for us to swap the AP. So like um, I change the mood. A fit AP we can actually using the some command to swap it back become the fat mode, become the independent uh, AP. So as the network scale expand. 10 or 100 of the AP assets on the network. To simplify the network management, the customer are advised to purchase the AC to perform, perform the centralized management on the AP and set the AP to work as a fit AP. Switching a fit AP to a fat AP. So right now this connection topology will be very simple. They only have one switch put at the middle and um, a lot of the PC is connected to the aggregation switch and they just require one AP. So for this kind of network connection, it doesn't require the controller. When we want to swap the uh, the AP mode, so you can try to tell that or console to the AP, enter to the system view. So first, we're using a command AP dash mode switch prepare. So we try to check, you see right now the AP is uh, able to um, swap between the fit and fat. Okay, we try to use this command to verify first. Then the chat. Check whether the switch over preparation is complete. Okay, is it ready for uh, change the, uh, the AP mode? Okay, using the command AP mode switch check. So make sure the check is okay. Everything is already done. Then now we can change. AP mode dash uh, AP dash mode dash switch FTP fat AP okay this one will be the oh, the system software for the AP so um right now they try to using the FTP way okay you also need to point to the FTP IP address with your uh, user ID and the password okay if you want to using the FTP way to switch the AP because some AP by default they maybe not support the switch mode. So we already downloaded some, uh, the latest system software from our PC. So and you want to put this uh, file into your AP. So you can just connect your AP to the network and then um, try to turn it to your AP using the command from here. Okay, please make sure your laptop can support the FTP. Okay, run the FTP server on your laptop. Okay, this one will be your PC IP address. So once they already fully download, then they automatic restart. Then the next, check whether the switch over is successful. Now, now you can try to display version. So after we display a version, you can notice, okay, right now this is my AP model, AP4030DN. And yes, right now I am in the fat model right now. Okay, this is a fat. FAT IP networking mode. So we'll notice there's only one IP without any controller here. Okay, they actually uh, for this kind of networking we call as an inline mode. Using the one SSID Huawei dash one with the service VLAN 101. Data planning, the DSCP server. AP will function as the DSCP server for SDA. IP pool for the SDA is using VLAN 101 and the range is 
10.1.101.2 and end with the 254. Okay, the country code, CN, the SSID. So what is the name of the SSID? Okay, right now it's using Huawei One. Security profile. The name, security-1, WEP, open system authentication, and no, no encryption. So it's just free for uh, connect. VIP, name is Huawei-1, service VLAN is 101. SSID profile will be Huawei-1. Security, I will using security-1. To set the AP become the DSCP server. Okay, right now they show you the way is with the CRI command line. So um, you have to enter to the system view. Enable the DSCP. Enable the VLAN. Go to the interface VLAN 101. Assign the IP address 10.1.101.1 space 24 so this is my IP address for my AP and DSCP select interface so this interface will be over the IP address for all the user who connected to this VLAN for the country code on the system view type WLAN and the next one change your country code okay, according which country that you belong to Okay, now we can configure on security profile uh, on the WLAN view. Okay, the WLAN view, you put the command security-profile name security-1. Okay, can be any name that you want. Then quit. Again, we create the SSID. SSID profile name Huawei-1. So on this SSID profile, you have to do some configuration. Give the name for your SSID. All right, put the command SSID space the name and then choose yes. Then the next one, configure the VAP. So to configure the VAP, you have to return back to your WLAN view. So VAP dash profile name Huawei dash one. Okay, now I already entering to the VAP profile. So I'm going to buy just now the SSID profile. Okay, this is the profile I created just now. Security profile, security dash one, and also the service VLAN. So for those who connected to my SSID here, I will go into assign the VLAN ID one zero one. Okay, then quick. So buy VIP profile on RF port and configure a default route to an upstream device. Because right now uh, our API right, is deployed at the SS layer, so it's on the SS layer. So for all the SS layer device, it's required to have the default route point to the uplink in order to route to the internet. Okay, so you have to um, add the static route on your AP. So this is the way for us to add the static route. Go to the interface, WLAN radio, zero zero zero. Okay, now we need to do the binding first. So this radio 000, I'm going to buy VIP profile Huawei 1 and WLAN number 1, my first WLAN. So, this is what I configured just now the Huawei 1. Okay, this is the VIP profile. So, right now I'm going to buy this one into my radio interface. Okay, this is my interface. Okay, once ready, done. Can go to the IP, uh, the system view again, system view, and then put IP route static 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 space 0 mean is anything. This is the default route and your gateway. AP management automatic discover of AC. An AP can exchange the information with available AC to establish a connection with an AC. So when it started, the AP will first go to check. Does the AP have the AC IP address configured? Mean, uh, did we actually configure the static AC IP address on our AP? If yes, it will automatically set up the connection 
via the IP address that we configure. Okay, they'll automatically send the uh, discovery based on the IP address that we assign. Okay, and then file the AC and establish the cat web. So this is a static way configure. If you never configure any AC IP address on our AP, so now the AP will go to start send the dynamic discovery. Okay, it will send the broadcast or maybe uh, if we enable the option for the tree on the DSCP server, yeah, and it will base on the um, the option for the tree and find the AC. So when AP successfully associate with the controller, then you form the web partner and end the connection. AC access control. After an AP is powered on, and AC checks some item to determine whether to allow the AP to go online or not. Okay, so just now the setting right is based on the AP only. So how the AP going to find the controller and establish the cat web. And now this one is the, is the process on the controller. So now the AP found the AC. Now the AC have to do some checking. Okay, right now the AP try to connect associate with me. Is the AP in the blacklist? If this AP is belong uh, is already added to the blacklist, so that means I will not allow this AP connect to my controller. So it will reject the access. So the AP will always fail to form the connection with your controller. If you never configure any blacklist, you go down here. Is the AP in the pre-configure list? So did we um, configure anything or for this AP? Like, did we do uh, any um, authentication or do we do any registration on the controller? If yes, then the AP can straight away go online. Okay, because this is the authorized AP. If we never do any registration on the A, uh, on the controller, so you're going to check, does the AP need to be authentication? So if you still remember, the Huawei controller can do three different type of the authentication. Default is a MAC authentication, then the second is a serial number authentication, and the last is no authentication. They have three times. So if the Huawei AC controller never configure the authentication, so that means any AP can able to reach my controller, they automatically form the connection. See, now the AP can go online. So if yes, the AP required to perform the authentication, then you go into chat. Mm, okay, first, are you have the MAC address or the serial number is already configured? Yes, then I go into chat. Right now the AP in the wireless. If this AP is inside the wireless, I will allow this AP to associate with my controller. If no, then we have to do this one manually. So the administrator have to add the AP again to the uh, to the AC. Okay, remember how to uh, add the MAC address or the serial number. Then once everything is already done, then they will go online. Data forwarding mode. The data forwarding mode will be very important. So sometimes when we deploy the network and we um, don't understand what is the uh, the architecture or maybe the network design on the uh, on the layer two or the layer three, it's very hard for you to um, make the decision to choosing the forwarding mode. So right here they're showing the forwarding mode. They have two different type: the direct forwarding or the cable forwarding. So what we need to know here is. For all the wireless packet, uh, it's not the wireless packet, it's um, the protocol, like the frame using by the AP and the controller. All this kind of information have to pass through the cat web tunnel. Okay, maybe I try to draw another example. So, okay, I'm going to put this one is my AP. Okay, so. I don't care this one is either it's layer 2 network or layer 3. And right here I have one controller. I put AC. Okay, connected. And I also have one gateway right here. 
okay, before you can go to the internet. Okay, so this one is the when. Okay, go to the internet. So right here, I have one user. Okay, I want to go online using the wireless. So if I go into using the direct forwarding, okay, let me draw the tunnel first. After the AP associate with the controller, okay, after associate, so they will form the carrier tunnel. So this is a carrier tunnel. AP and controller must always using the carrier tunnel to exchange the information. Okay, this one is happening in between the AC and the AP. They have no other option. Now, for the user, the user frame we call as a data frame. The data frame, we have two options, depend which mode that you're going to select. If right now you select the, the mode is called direct forwarding. The direct forwarding, the user can send the frame to the AP and the AP can direct forward your frame to the gateway and go online. So this is called direct forwarding. Just take note. And the next one, if right now I select the cap web tunnel forwarding, cap web tunnel forwarding, so same, the user data will first deliver to the AP. But because right now I'm doing the tunnel mode, so the tunnel packet have to enter into the tunnel first and then go back to the controller. So then the controller will be based on the routing table and forward your data to the gateway. So they have a two different configuration. So just take note. You have to understand your topology network design here and when we when uh, you are going to assign the direct forwarding and when you're going to using the CapWeb tunnel forwarding mode. Okay, so that's a different here. Introduction to the RF management. The RF management uh, feature allow WLAN to rapidly adapt to changing wireless environments in the real time by using intelligent methods, including the data collection, analysis, radio frequency resource allocation, and RF resource adjustment. So this is one of the feature, radio calibration. The radio calibration function adjusts a radio parameter of APs connected to the AC to optimize the radio performance. Because we know when there are too many AP deployed at the same floor, same building, so and we're going to maximum the coverage, uh, coverage uh, by the AP. So um, for this kind of the configuration, to cause a lot of interference. Right. So right here, what is the calibration? Now we have three AP. Assuming you notice the AP number one, AP number two, this is the BSA, the coverage area. When you try to compare with the AP number three BSA, the AP number three have wide coverage compared with AP one and AP two. So now I'm going to add a new AP into this topology, AP, uh, AP number four. And I already enabled the radio calibration on my controller. So all the AP you try to scan the surrounding. So they notice they have another party joined to the network and they have another coverage on this area. So the AP number three will try to smaller its own coverage distance okay, to reduce the interference. So you notice right now, compare the previous and the after, the AP3 have less coverage. Okay, and this is the overlapping area. When AP number four go offline, don't worry. When AP4 go offline, they actually still exist here, but they just go, go offline already. Now the AP3, you're going to um, extend its own coverage area to cover some of the bright spot on the area AP number four. Okay, this is a radio calibration. They will automatically adjust the coverage. The load balancing. WLAN load balancing ensures the sufficient transmission rate and bandwidth for each SDA by evenly uh, distributing traffic of SDA among AP. So the load balancing is only happening on the overlapping area. Okay, so uh, the load balancing will be never happening in the same BSA. 
So you need to know the BSA, the coverage. So this is my AP. I have my own coverage. And then uh, the AP number two also have its own coverage area. So the loop balancing is only applied to this overlapping area. Okay, only the PC connected in this area, the high chance can support the load balancing. So based on the traffic, so when the AP1 is already have too many SDAs connected, so you're going to load balance the user here to the AP number two. And so this one is based on the configuration that we done. And the next one, the band steering. So the band steering, how to um, enable that? will be very simple. So if you're using a web configuration, so you just have to go to the uh, the configuration set up there, choose band steering, and then tick. Okay, then you already enable. So the function of the band steering, you're going to force all the SDA can support the five gigahertz to connect to the five gigahertz frequency band. Okay, to save the uh, the bandwidth on the 2.4. When the 2.4 is too heavy, too many users is connected to the 2.4 already. So for some PC can using 5 gigahertz, they will load balancing them to the 5 gigahertz. Then the next one is the WLAN WDS. So connected two or more wire or wireless LAN wirelessly to establish a large network. Okay, so this one on the previous one also they mentioned. So for the WDS, we can have the point-to-point, -point, point to multi point or using the repeated mode. Okay, so this one can using for those kind of scenario when they don't want to deploy too many um, the LAN cable connections. So to prevent a single link fail or maybe one of the middle AP fail problems, we can try to using the mass network connection. So they're using the MPP uh, and also the, the mass point and the uh, MAP, the mass access point, to form the mass connections. Okay, you have uh, the redundant right here. So other features, besides preceding the feature, Huawei WLAN products support the following basic feature. The first one, SDA blacklist and the wireless management and the user isolation. So we can base on the MAC address or the IP address and blacklist the SDA. For the user isolation, yes, we can enable that also. You can base on the SSID. So for those who connected to the SSID, I will not allow them to form the um, connections. For the security feature, such as access security policy management, okay, we also can perform some of the SCL uh, isolating. QoS, including the radio, and the VIP QoS policy management. And the last one will be WLAN positioning. And the next one, the key feature of Huawei WLAN product. The technology for improving WLAN reliability. So we have the host then by backup. Dueling HSP or the VIRP HSP. Okay, the HSP stands for the host standby. Dual link backup. And the last one is N plus one backup. So this start from the first one, the host standby backup, HSP. The AC HSP mechanism ensures that service are smoothly switched to the backup device when the master device fail. So the solution provides a two backup mode based on the different networking. So the first one, they have the master and backup and the load balancing mode. So let's look at the first one, the master and the backup mode. So what's so different between this compared with another? So right now, my AC number one is the master. AC number two is a backup. So all the traffic and the AP will only associate and form the carob tunnel with the master. So in all time, most of the time, the controller number two is just a standby device. It will not going to perform any uh, the uh, the service configuration delivered to the AP. Okay, it is just a backup. 
and the blue color link here is running the HSP. So when the master is failed, okay, this is already down. So all the AP will go in to connect to the backup AP. Okay, AC number two. Okay, this is the backup. Then the next one, the loop balancing. The loop balancing mode can able to split the traffic. Like AP number one will go in to connect to the AC number one. AP number two will connect and form the carrier tunnel with the AC number two. So with this called deployment, they have a load balancing. And you don't need to worry, uh, the AC number two is just put there as a standby and become uh, uh, like underutilized. So this is something we don't want to see. You want to map two AC have the performance. So we can using the load balancing here. So AP managed by AC number one, AP two managed by AC number two. And don't worry about the contract fail problems because when one of the contract here fail, the, the other AP will still load balance and connect to another controller. Okay, so AP will go to form the capital tunnel with the AC number two automatically when the device fail. Then the next one, the VRRP HSP. Currently, the AC use one management VRRP group to maintain the master backup status on the uh, entire system and do not support loop balancing. When we're using the VRP, they don't support the loop balancing. So VRP based HSP has a following characteristic. The uplink back, backup each other and the VRP group can track status of the uplink. The status of an AC may be different from its downlink status. So when we perform the VRP configuration, please take note. So we have to do some the the tracing to the uplink. Okay, so when the uplink also faulty, you will always uh, notice notice the downlink also at the same time. Okay, they're going to shut out the downlink to swap the AP connect to another good condition uh, control. Multiple downlink, including the fixed network and the wireless network link. So when we have a multiple downlink, so that means uh, they right now have the redundant ready. All the switches and the control is connected, and uh, it's like the, the ring. Okay, it's like the ring topology. So try to using the spanning tree, multiple spanning tree protocol to prevent the loop. Okay, we have to enable that because some of the um, device, uh, the control also is part of the the switch also. Okay, consider it's a switch. So uh, they also can running the VLAN and high chance if we didn't enable the STP, they might cause the broadcast stop. So it's recommended when you have the redundant network, try to ensure you did enable the MSTP. When the MSTP status is changed, the main rest ARP table of the dialing are automatic clear. Beside user entry backup, the KWeb Tunnel and AP entry need to be backed up also. The next one, the Dual Link HSP. Dual Link HSP has the following feature. Receive and send only the backup service data. Okay, this is a function of the HSP. So you will notice previously uh, you, from the picture there, you see they have one like blue color link. So the link is actually used to running the HSP only. So they just exchange the backup service information. So the HSP is support the loop balancing. The dual link HSP support data forwarding across a layer tree and therefore support two AC using the routing protocol. Next, uh, the dual link backup. Networking for dual link backup. AC1, AC2. So they have the redundant network connect. So they have a dual uplink network. In the AC plus feed AP network architecture, the AC manage and control WLAN services for wireless user in centralized manner. One AC usually control hundred of AP and over 10,000 STA. 
So when a fault occur on the control of the uh, or the link between the control and the AP is failed, so the service of all the user connect to the AC will be interrupted. So this is a main problem here because previously all my information is managed by the controller, my master controller. Okay, this is the information stored over there. So when the link here is free already, it will interrupt our current access user services. So if dual link backup is enabled, the standby AC control the WLAN service for wireless user. When the fault occurs on the active AC, or the link between the AC and the AP fail. So this reduces the service interruption time. So this is a process for um, the dwelling establishing. So starting how they actually form the connection. So I have two AC right here. Left and right is the AC. At the middle here is the AP access point. So this access point, we're going to send the broadcast. Okay, try to discover the controller. Then the controller is going to respond. This uh, discover respond, they deliver with the priority. Okay, same to the AC right here, AC number two. It will also send it. So this priority inside the controller is the smaller the priority is the highest the prefer. So now the AP compared with these two, AC number one, priority one. AC number two, priority number two. So after compare, the AP here, you're going to choose the first controller. Okay, because this is priority number one. They have a highest prefer than the AC number two. So AP, you're going to form camera tunnel with the first AC. Okay, so this one tunnel is already formed. So um, the AP here will keep continue sending the discovery request to the standby AC. Okay, active standby switch over. So this is my active camera tunnel. The AP will periodically send the e call detection. Okay, it's like those of the ICMP uh, packet. It keeps sending to the controller there to make sure the link is still established. When the link or maybe the controller never reply to the AP, so the AP will know there's some problem happening on the camera tunnel. So it will go to build a new tunnel connect to the standby controller. And the standby controller will become the active AC right now. And no need to worry if the active AC come back online because it will be able to detect it. Because when the AC come uh, back online, the AP will keep periodically send the discovery request. So when the AC here respond, AP will know. So right now the AC is back online. I need to form back the camera tunnel with my active AC. Okay, and this one also must make sure we did enable the uh, the restore function on our controller. If it uh, doesn't uh, enable that, so the AP will never form back the camera tunnel with our active AC. Dual link backup networking. This topology showing the inline networking mode because um, the traffic all have to connect back to the controller and this controller have an uplink. Okay, they have a downlink and the uplink, so we will call it as an inline networking. And this is the bypass networking. So the dual link backup can use as an inline networking mode and also the backup networking like this. Summary. Basic feature of Huawei WLAN product and the key feature of the Huawei WLAN product.